Hey everybody, Ethan here. Welcome to Hello Road. So right behind me is my 1985 Mitsubishi Galant, perhaps one of the rarest cars I've ever owned. Definitely not rare in terms of production numbers, but certainly rare in terms of how many of these things are likely still driving on the roads in the United States. Not many of these things were sold back in the day, and certainly far fewer are left. While this is definitely one of the nicer sedans you could have purchased in 1985, cars like this were just sort of treated as disposable. A lot of these got crushed, a lot of these got sent to the junkyard, but when I saw this car for sale, I just absolutely had to buy it. I'm a big fan of cars that are just survivors. You just kind of wonder, how did this thing make it all the way to today without getting crushed, without getting junked, without getting crashed? Obviously, somebody took pretty good care of this vehicle. They didn't drive it very much. It only has 110,000 miles on it. And overall, it's just a really nice example of a kind of slightly more upscale sedan that you could have got back then. Now, one of the things that I absolutely love about this car is the design. I love the boxy shapes, kind of reminds me of an 85, 86 Toyota Camry, but just a little bit weirder. Maybe it kind of reminds me a little bit more of a French design, like a Renault 21 or a Renault Medallion, or even like an Eagle Premier, if you remember what those look like. There's a lot of little details here that set it apart from the Toyota Camrys and the Honda Accords of the day. Some things that kind of give it slightly more of an upscale feel. That's one of the things I like about this car is that Mitsubishi came into this market and they thought they're gonna just make it slightly better than the competition, but ultimately that did not translate to sales. They sold very few of these things in the United States, but they're certainly a lot more popular in other markets. So when I purchased this car, it was seriously in need of some love. I put a lot of time and money and effort into this vehicle. It's not perfect now. There's still some issues, which we'll get to in a second. So since I've owned it, I put in two new axles, new motor mounts, new transaxle mounts. It's got all new belts, new spark plugs, new spark plug wires. It's got a new distributor cap and rotor, new valve cover gasket. I've done a lot to get this thing back on the road. I've done a lot to get this thing driving a lot better than it was. This car was last registered in 2016. So yes, it's been a very long time since this car has been on the road. So I'm super excited to get this thing current. And I spent $760 on back registration to get this thing on the road again. It'll be worth it to the next owner of this car, which I guess that's something. So finally, I'm gonna get this sticker on the car. Oh, and have you noticed the license plate on this car? Kind of looks like I know Go 55. You think maybe Sammy Hagar used to own this car? Hmm. Now there's one thing that I neglected to tell you. This car is up for sale. Yep, I'm selling this thing. You might be wondering, Ethan, you didn't have that car for very long. Why are you selling it so soon? Well, I've actually had the car for six months. And as you know, I have way too many projects. I've got way too many cars. They're all needy, cheap, broken cars. And I feel like I've gotten this one to the point where it's actually somewhat decent. So I probably should pass this one on to the next owner, somebody that really, really appreciates old Mitsubishis. I mean, I do, but I know there's Mitsubishi fanatics out there that would just absolutely love to have something like this. So yeah, it's up for sale. Okay, so let's take this thing for one more drive before I sell it. All right, so this Galant has a 2.4 liter four cylinder in it. It's got a four speed automatic. And uh, yeah, it just rides really nice. The suspension's a little soft, but you know, this is not a sports car. Now, as I mentioned, some of the things that I like about this car are the unique features that this interior has. I love this dashboard pod that's right in front of me. This whole thing moves when you move the tilt wheel. It's got everything from your lights, to your turn signal, to your climate control, to your windshield wipers, all in this pod right here. And check out this cool turn signal stock. It's so weird. I love stuff like this. I love that they tried something a little bit different and it's actually really cool that everything's right here at your fingertips. And speaking of automatic climate control, this is an early car to have automatic climate control. That wasn't very common back in 85. So yeah, you actually get some luxury features in this car. You might take that for granted today, but automatic climate control in 85 was a pretty big deal. I'm also a really big fan of the headlight switch in this thing. It's just this big chunky dial. Same for the windshield wipers on the other side. Oh, and this turn signal stock, it's just cool. It looks weird. 
It's not standard, but it actually works really well. Another thing that's a little bit different, that's kind of more era specific, are actual colors on the interior. A lot of new cars, it's just black. Everything's just black on the inside. It's it pretty boring, but it's nice to see that they went all out with this car. Very, very maroon in here. Now back to those luxury features, things like power windows. They all still work in this car. It's got power mirrors and uh, power door locks. All that stuff still works. By today's standards, not really very big of a deal. But back then, power windows was kind of a big deal. And everything is just still pretty clean. There's a couple small cracks in the dashboard, but in general, pretty good for being as old of a car as this is. Oh, and I love these gauges, the amber glow that you get at night. I had to do a whole night video with this thing just because it looks so awesome. Here's a clip. And another thing that will take you right back to 1985 is the stereo. It has a working cassette player. I actually tested it out. I was quite surprised that it still worked, but it does. It didn't eat any of my tapes. And another thing that's kind of surprising is none of the vents are broken. You get in a lot of cars from the 80s, and there's a lot of broken plastic bits, but in this car, all of the vents work just like new. Now, another thing to show you that this was slightly more luxurious than the other sedans of this era, these seats in general are just really cushy and wide. You know, you get in a lot of cars from the 80s, a lot of Japanese cars from the 80s, and the seats are just tiny. This actually feels kind of more like an American style seat from that era. All right, so that right there, that's the little issue this car has. When I bought this car, I pretty much knew right away that there was a couple issues with the transmission. The thing that I noticed most was a big clunk when it downshifted from third to second. And that was pretty clearly the transmission mount or, the, or a motor mount. So I brought this over to Joe at Sean's Auto Care and they did a ton of work to this thing. And one of the things that they did was put in new transaxle mounts and new motor mounts. So that clunk is now gone. We flushed the transmission fluid, it's got new axles. But the transmission isn't perfect. It's still a little bit lazy to shift into third and a little bit lazy to downshift. But as far as the actual engine, it runs great. When I first got the car, it was leaking a little bit of oil out of the valve cover gasket, but I put a new one in and it actually was a pretty easy job. Cleaned up the valve cover and got it looking all nice. So it looks pretty decent under the hood. So as I mentioned, I put a lot of money into this car, over a thousand dollars in parts and labor. And of course I spent that $760 on the registration. So I've got a lot of money into this car. I don't expect to make all that back. I'm just happy that I was able to sort of save this thing. It hadn't been registered since 2016. I'm glad that I was able to get it back on the road again. Yeah, it's not very powerful. Take yourself back to 1985. Take yourself back to when 13, 14 seconds, zero to 60 times were pretty acceptable. That's what you're gonna get with this car. So if you just reset your brain back to 85, think about yourself as being an uh, up and coming executive. You wanted something nice. You didn't wanna buy something really expensive or ostentatious like a Mercedes. You wanted to just have a normal car that was a little bit better than everybody else's. But not that many people made that choice. Mitsubishi was really new to the US, at least in terms of Mitsubishi branded cars. They had cars branded as Chryslers and Dodges and Plymouths and Colts before then but Mitsubishi really wasn't that well known in the US and still there was some baby boomer resentment to Mitsubishi's involvement in World War II. But yeah, in general, I think it was just the brand was not very well known. They only started selling cars under their own brand here in 84. So I don't know how many of these things they sold in the US. I gotta imagine less than 10,000 for this year. I gotta imagine there's just only a handful of these things left. How many do you think are still here? 10, 20, five, I don't know. Oh, and there's some other really interesting features in this interior. The rear seats, they recline on a Mitsubishi in 1985. I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, but that's just so awesome. And one of the other things that I just noticed by accident is that the rear headrests actually move laterally. They move left to right, which is like such a strange feature that they would include on a car like this, but they did, and it's really rad. I don't know why I'm selling this car. I get so excited talking about it. I really shouldn't be selling this car. I'm an idiot. 
Instead, I'll keep some of my more broken cars, which, uh, yeah, I'm not very smart. And one of the other things that I really love about driving this car is knowing that you're just not gonna see another one around. I have not seen another 85 Gallant in about 20 years. I have not seen another fifth generation Gallant in about 20 years. This is the only one. Yeah, this car has a few issues still, but there's just so much about this vehicle that I love. It's just wonderful. So there you have it, my 1985 Mitsubishi Gallant. Ultimately, I'm just glad that I was able to get this car back on the road and get to experience it for a little bit. There's so much about this car that makes me smile. I'm just hoping I can pass this along to somebody else that can appreciate it as much as I did. I know there's definitely some people out there, some people that love these old Mitsubishis, some people that love obscure and forgotten cars. I know there's more than just me, right? Even though this is just sort of a normal car, it's not an exotic, it's not really anything that people would have considered all that special back in the day. I feel like it's sort of like an archeological project to save cars like this, to keep them on the road. Yeah, there's a lot of nostalgia here for the vehicles that I used to see growing up, but there's something to be said about preserving those cars that just kind of blended in back in the day. They're worth remembering, they're worth saving, even if just to let other people discover those quirky features that were in the car like this. At some point, all of the normal, utilitarian, econobox, and just sort of basic cars, they're gonna be all gone. And for some reason, I don't really know why, but it just seems important to preserve a few examples of what just normal people used to drive. So if you could save a car from a junkyard fate, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below. Now, a lot of you know that I'm a big fan of the Radwood Car Show. It's a car show for 80s and 90s vehicles. And I've done quite a few videos at their shows in the past. And the people that put together that show have also created an auction site for rad vehicles, for vehicles from the 80s and 90s. It's called radforsale.com, and that's where this car is going to be listed. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I just happen to really like those guys, and I'm looking forward to seeing what other cool and rad cars are for sale on that site. So I have no idea how much this is gonna sell for. You know how much I put into it based on this video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna break even, or make money or lose money. I don't really care that much. I just want this car to go to a Mitsubishi enthusiast or somebody that just loves these kind of weird cars from the 80s. So yeah, that's where it's gonna be for sale at radforsale.com. And if you're watching this after the car is already sold, sorry, but knowing me, I'll probably have a few other cars that I'll sell there in the future. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, at the end of the day, cars are just piles of metal, oil and gasoline. It's not about the cars themselves, it's about the adventures they take us on and the new stories that we create with them. So go do something fun with your car. See you later.